Freeport, Bahamas, AP, the latest on Hurricane Dorian, all times local, 8.40 p.m. The Prime Minister of the Bahamas says the death toll from Hurricane Dorian has risen to seven and that more deaths are expected. Hubert Minnis says the deaths involve two people who were injured earlier and taken to New Providence Island. He spoke late Tuesday at a news conference. Minnis said he flew over the Abaco Islands and expects to do the same in Grand Bahama as soon as the weather clears. In Abaco, he saw groups of people waving yellow sheets and shirts. He said 60% of homes were damaged in Marsh Harbor and that at least one community was completely destroyed at 8 p.m. Dorian is scraping the central part of Florida's east coast as it tracks offshore. The U.S. National Hurricane Center says Dorian is now about 110 miles, 180 kilometers, east of Cape Canaveral, Florida. Maximum sustained winds are being clocked at 110 miles per hour. 175 kilometers per hour. It's moving to the northwest at 6 miles per hour, 9 kilometers per hour. Dorian virtually stalled over the northwestern Bahamas in recent days as a Category 5 storm that caused widespread devastation in parts of the island archipelago. It was the most powerful hurricane on record ever to hit the Bahamas. At least five deaths were reported there though the full scope of the disaster still remains unknown. Underscore 7 colon 30 p.m., Richard Halpern, of Bonita Springs, Florida, has a condo in Port Lucaya, Grand Bahama and waited out Hurricane Dorian for days in his second floor unit. Halpern says the noise from the storm was very loud and constant. He adds, these are noises you never want to hear in your life. This lingered for such a long time that no one could be prepared for that. Halpern says his area was one of the few not hit by the storm surge from Dorian. But he says not far away, we have friends who had to walk out of their homes and waste high water. Halpern and his wife are without power and without water and haven't figured out a way to travel out of the island. Underscore 6 p.m. Hurricane Dorian is now pulling away from the northwestern Bahamas and beginning to scrape Florida's east coast with its winds and rain. Forecasters say Dorian was centered at 6 p.m. EDT Tuesday about 125 miles, 200 kilometers, east of Melbourne, Florida. It has top sustained winds of 110 miles per hour, 175 kilometers per hour, as a Category 2 hurricane. The storm is moving to the northwest at 6 miles per hour, 9 kilometers per hour, tracking offshore and nearly parallel to Florida's Atlantic shoreline. Dorian virtually stalled over the northwestern Bahamas in recent days as a Category 5 storm that caused widespread devastation in parts of the island archipelago. It was the most powerful hurricane on record ever to hit the islands. At least five deaths were reported though the full scope of the disaster still remains uncertain. Underscore 5 colon 45 p.m. Some of the first post-storm images out of Grand Bahama are showing children and elderly people huddled in the shovel of a huge bulldozer as it evacuates them to a safer area. Practically parking over the Bahamas for a day and a half. Hurricane Dorian pounded the islands and left widespread devastation to thousands of homes earlier this week. Many people were reported trapped in their homes by high waters from what was then an extremely dangerous Category 5 storm. Rescuers began evacuating people late Tuesday using jet skis, boats. They even brought in the large bulldozer, which carried people through deep muddy waters to safety. Many had their heads bowed down by still heavy wind and rain. Underscore 5 colon 50 p.m. Universal Orlando Resort is closing its theme parks in Florida early for the day because of Hurricane Dorian. The theme park resort says its two parks, Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure, were shutting as of 6 p.m. Tuesday. Other theme parks in Orlando had already made plans to close early or not open at all. SeaWorld was closed Tuesday because of Dorian. And Walt Disney World closed its four theme parks by mid-afternoon Tuesday. Forecasters say Dorian was centered Tuesday afternoon about 125 miles, 200 kilometers, east of Melbourne, Florida with top sustained winds of 110 miles per hour, 
175 km per hour, as a Category 2 hurricane. It's moving to the northwest offshore from Florida's east coast at underscore 5 colon 35 p.m. Georgia Gov. Brian Camp says the latest forecast information indicates his state's coastline could be hit with winds up to 60 miles per hour, 95 kilometers per hour, winds and storm surges of 4 to 7 feet, 1.2 meters to 2 meters. As Dorian approaches, Kemp had previously ordered evacuations of the coast and said light traffic counts coming out of the area so far concern him. I'm hoping a lot of people are waiting until tonight or first thing in the morning, Kemp said Tuesday as Dorian approached the southeast sea coast as a Category 2 hurricane. State meteorologist Will Langston says forecasters cannot yet say when the worst of the storm surge will hit. The U.S. National Hurricane Center recently adjusted its forecast tracks, putting Dorian closer to the south and North Carolina coasts later in the week. Earlier this week Dorian pummeled parts of the Bahamas as a Category 5 storm, leaving widespread devastation. Underscore 5 colon 15 p.m. More than a quarter million visitors and residents have been told to leave North Carolina's coastal region ahead of Hurricane Dorian. The most populous coastal county to be evacuated is Dare County, where 250,000 people, including 36,000 residents, have been told to get out. In New Hanover County, where flooding cut off the city of Wilmington during last year's Hurricane Florence, officials said they didn't expect a similar issue from Dorian. They say the storm isn't expected to dump as much rain in the ground isn't as saturated as it was last year. The U.S. National Hurricane Cinder adjusted its forecast tracks on Tuesday putting Dorian closer to the south and North Carolina coasts. Forecasters noted that even if Dorian doesn't make landfall, it's likely to bring dangerous winds, life-threatening storm surge and flooding rains to parts of the Carolinas. Underscore 5 p.m. Winds are increasing along parts of Florida's east coast as Hurricane Dorian tracks offshore in the Atlantic. The U.S. National Hurricane Center says a Category 2 storm was centered at about 5 p.m. EDT Tuesday about 105 miles, 170 kilometers, east of Vero Beach, Florida. Top sustained winds are at 110 miles per hour, 175 kilometers per hour, and Dorian is moving to the northwest at 6 miles per hour, 9 kilometers per hour. Forecasters say Dorian is expected to move dangerously close to the coast of Florida and Georgia from Tuesday night through Wednesday night before menacing the coast of the Carolinas Thursday and Friday. The Hurricane Center has adjusted its forecast tracks closer to the coasts of South and North Carolina, noting a track that close to the coast, even if landfall does not occur, is likely to bring dangerous winds, life-threatening storm surge, and flooding rains across the eastern portions of the Carolinas. Underscore 4 colon 55 p.m. The National Hurricane Center has extended hurricane morning from Savannah River to Edisto Beach, South Carolina and from the South Santee River in South Carolina to Surf City, North Carolina. Storm surge warnings have been extended to Surf City. The storm surge watch has been expanded northward to Duck, North Carolina. The hurricane watch now extends to the North Carolina slash Virginia border and tropical storm watch now reaches to the Chincoteague, Virginia, and for the southern part of the Chesapeake Bay, from Smith Point southward. The hurricane warning from Sebastian Inlet to Jupiter Inlet in Florida has been reduced to a tropical storm warning and tropical storm warnings south of there have been dropped. Underscore 4 p.m. Hurricane Dorian has begun lashing parts of Florida's east coast with tropical storm force winds. The U.S. National Hurricane Center says Dorian remains a Category 2 storm moving nearly parallel to Florida's east coast but offshore. It said that as of 4 p.m. EDT Tuesday, a sustained wind gust of 60 miles per hour, 95 kilometers per hour, was reported recently at a weather station in Melbourne Beach, Florida. The Eye of Dorian continues to move away from Grand Bahama Island after leaving widespread devastation in parts of the Bahamas. Dorian Center is now about 105 miles, 165 kilometers, east of Fort Pierce, Florida. Its top sustained winds are now at 110 miles per hour, 175 kilometers per hour.
The storm is moving northwest at 5 miles per hour, 7 kilometers per hour. Underscore 3 colon 50 p.m. The North Carolina Department of Transportation's Ferry Division is assisting with a mandatory evacuation for visitors on Okra Cove Island in the Outer Banks. The division evacuated 984 passengers and transported 498 vehicles from Okra Cove Island between 5 a.m. and 3 p.m. Tuesday. The ferry division will help evacuate Okra Cove Island residents starting at 5 a.m. Wednesday. The ferries serving Okra Coke will be suspended Wednesday afternoon. North Carolina's governor has waived ferry fees for the evacuation. Underscore 3 hole in 35 p.m. The Federal Emergency Management Agency says Hurricane Dorian is still expected to bring life threatening storm surges even as it was downgraded to a Category 2 hurricane. FEMA Associate Administrator Carlos Castillo said Tuesday that residents along the U.S. East Coast should be prepared to evacuate if necessary and should heed evacuation orders from local officials. He says, don't tough it out, get out. Castillo says FEMA has over 1,600 employees deployed or on the way to Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. The American Red Cross says they've already opened 170 shelters and evacuation centers. Over 13,000 people are already at those facilities. The National Guard and U.S. Coast Guard say they have also readied troops and are ready to respond once a storm hits. Underscore 3 hole in 35 p.m. The U.S. military is taking precautions as Hurricane Dorian threatens ships and planes based on Virginia's coast. U.S. Air Force Colonel David Lopez said in a statement Tuesday that F-22 Raptor fighter jets and T-38 Talon training planes will leave Langley Air Force Base in Hampton. The planes will fly to the Rickenbacker Air National Guard base outside Columbus, Ohio. Meanwhile, the U.S. Navy is ordering ships on Virginia's coast to prepare to leave if necessary. Vice Admiral Andrew Lewis said in a statement that ships at the world's largest Navy base in Norfolk and other nearby installations will be ready to depart within 24 hours. By heading out to sea, the ships will better protect themselves and reduce significant potential damage to piers, airplanes and other infrastructure. Underscore 2 colon 50 p.m. Florida Gov. Ron DeSantis expressed some relief that Hurricane Dorian's track changed before hitting the state but he warned residents near the coast to follow local emergency officials' instructions for evacuations. Sandy said that over the last week and a half, Dorian forecasts had potentially all 67 counties in its path and people should stay safe and remain vigilant over the coming days. Meanwhile in South Carolina, officials say nearly a quarter million people have evacuated from that state's coast ahead of Dorian. Secretary of Transportation Christy Hall said Tuesday that a total of 244,000 people have headed South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster's order to leave the state's coast and head inland. That's nearly a third of the total of about 800,000 people officials have said they believe to be in the evacuation zone, which includes the state's entire coast. Underscore 2 colon 50 p.m. Air Force General Terrence O'Shaughnessy told reporters Tuesday it's too early to tell what U.S. Military forces may be needed to help the Bahamas, which has suffered extensive damage from Hurricane Dorian. He said the hospital ship USNS Comfort is a four- or five-day sail away and could be used for medical assistance. He said the military is also prepared to provide engineering, transportation and other help to reopen airports and fix the airfields. O'Shaughnessy says the USS Baton and its amphibious ready group, with thousands of sailors and marines aboard are also off the coast of North Carolina and could be used if needed. Defense Secretary Mark Esper has already authorized 14 days of support to the Bahamas if needed. The U.S. Coast Guard is already providing logistics and search and rescue aid in the Bahamas, and has six helicopters there so far. Underscore 2 colon 15 p.m. The center of Hurricane Dorian is finally moving away from Grand Bahama Island but the U.S. National Hurricane Center says the island will continue getting dangerous winds and life-threatening storm surge through the evening. Dorian's maximum sustained winds Tuesday afternoon remain at 110 mph, 
175 km per hour, making it a Category 2 hurricane. The hurricane is centered about 65 miles, 105 km, north of Freeport and is moving northwest near 5 miles per hour, 7 km per hour. Practically parking over the Bahamas for a day and a half, Dorian has been pounding the islands in a watery onslaught that devastated thousands of homes, trapped people in attics and crippled hospitals. Meanwhile, Tropical Storm Fernand has formed in the Gulf of Mexico, prompting a tropical storm warning for Mexico's northeast coast. Underscore at 2 p.m. As Hurricane Dorian pounds the Bahamas, a new tropical storm is formed in the Gulf of Mexico. Tropical Storm Fernand formed Tuesday afternoon, prompting a tropical storm warning for Mexico's northeast coast. The storm's maximum sustained winds are near 40 miles per hour, 65 kilometers per hour. The U.S. National Hurricane Center says slow strengthening is expected before the storm moves inland. It's centered about 160 miles, 255 kilometers, east of La Pesca, Mexico and is moving west near 7 miles per hour, 11 kilometers per hour. Underscore 1 colon 30 p.m. The Georgia Department of Transportation is reporting light traffic on the interstate highway being used as a one-way evacuation route for coastal residents fleeing Hurricane Dorian. State officials Tuesday morning turned all lanes of Interstate 16 into an eastbound route from Savannah on the coast to Dublin about 100 miles, 160 kilometers. Inland, the state dot said in a news release the route was seeing light traffic Tuesday afternoon and cars were running at the speed limit. The agency urged coastal residents to evacuate before traffic on I-16 increased. Forecasters expect Dorian to approach coastal Georgia on Wednesday, most likely with the storm center staying offshore. Georgia Gov. Brian Kim ordered a mandatory evacuation for the entire Georgia coast beginning Monday. Roughly 540,000 people live in the state's six coastal counties. Underscore 1 colon 30 p.m. Officials in the South Carolina city of Charleston are mulling putting a prohibition on price gouging in full effect as residents continue to evacuate the coast ahead of Hurricane Dorian. City officials said they would meet later Tuesday to consider two emergency ordinances designed to prohibit price gouging and enable emergency road closures. Anti-price gouging measures are often considered to protect motorists scrambling to move inland ahead of storms. Governor Henry McMaster has ordered evacuations along South Carolina's coast, reversing a major interstate so that all lanes lead inland from Charleston. To accommodate more drivers, many areas of Charleston's historic downtown peninsula regularly flood with rising tides, a situation expected to become worse as the storm and its rainfall approach. City officials said they expected tides to increase significantly Wednesday afternoon into Thursday. Underscore at 12 p.m. Officials in northeastern Florida are urging people to stay away from the beaches due to possible storm surge from Hurricane Dorian. Flagler County Emergency Management Director Jonathan Lord said Tuesday that waves of up to 20 feet, 6 meters, are expected along the area's Atlantic beaches as the storm moves toward the north. He says there can still be life-threatening if not deadly conditions at the beach. Lord said storm surges expected along the ocean and the intercoastal waterway. Underscore at 12 p.m. Two Florida men have been arrested for stealing sandbags meant for Hurricane Dorian preparations. The Volusia County Sheriff's Office said in a statement that Tylon Lewis and Joseph Colombo Jr. were arrested Monday evening after a deputy spotted one man taking the sandbags from a highway overpass and the other acting as a lookout. Lewis is charged with theft during a declared state of emergency, a third-degree felony. Colombo was also arrested for an injunction violation for possessing a firearm, a first-degree misdemeanor. Online court records show no attorneys listed for the men. Underscore 11 a.m. Hurricane Dorian has weakened to a Category 2 storm as it continues to batter the Bahamas with life-threatening storm surge. The U.S. National Hurricane Center says Dorian's maximum sustained winds decreased Tuesday morning to near 110 miles per hour, 175 kilometers per hour, but it's expected to remain a powerful hurricane during the next few days. 
Dorian is centered about 45 miles, 70 kilometers, north of Freeport in the Bahamas and is moving northwest near 2 miles per hour, 4 kilometers per hour. Underscore 9 colon 35 a.m., Bahamas Health Minister Dwayne Sands tells the Associated Press that Hurricane Dorian devastated the health infrastructure in Grand Bahama Island and massive flooding has rendered the main hospital unusable. He said Tuesday that the storm caused less severe damage in the neighboring Abaco Islands and he hopes to send an advanced medical team there soon, Sands said the main hospital in Marsh Harbor is intact and sheltering 400 people but needs food, water, medicine and surgical supplies. He also said crews are trying to airlift between 5 and 7 and stage kidney failure patients from Abaco who haven't received dialysis since Friday. Dorian hit Abaco on Sunday with sustained winds of 185 miles per hour, 295 kilometers per hour, and gusts up to 220 miles per hour, 355 kilometers per hour, a strength matched only by the Labor Day hurricane of 1935. The storm then hovered over Grand Bahama for a day and a half. Underscore 9 colon 20 a.m. United Nations officials estimate more than 60,000 people in the northwest Bahamas will need food following the devastation left by Hurricane Dorian. A spokesman for the UN, World Food Program said Tuesday that a team is ready to help the Bahamian government assess storm damage and prioritize needs. Erve Verhuzel says preliminary calculations show that 45,700 people in Grand Bahama Island may need food, along with another 14,500 in the neighboring Abaco Islands. Meanwhile, a spokesman for the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Society says some 62,000 people also will need access to clean drinking water. Matthew Cochran says about 45% of homes in Grand Bahama and Abaco were severely damaged or destroyed and the organization will help 20,000 of the most vulnerable people, including the large Haitian community. Underscore 8 colon 25 a.m., Georgia Gov. Brian Kemp said he ordered evacuations along the length of his state's coast, which includes several low-lying islands, because if there is flooding on causeways. They won't be able to get vehicles on or off the islands. Kemp told Fox News Channel's Fox and Friends on Tuesday morning that he's expecting Hurricane Dorian to batter Georgia with heavy winds, severe flooding, a storm surge and beach erosion. He said a reverse traffic or contraflow on Interstate 16 begins Tuesday morning. The Category 3 storm has been battering the Bahamas, causing extensive damage and flooding. Underscore 8 colon 05 a.m. Hurricane Dorian is beginning to inch northwestward after being stationary over the Bahamas, where its relentless winds have caused catastrophic damage and flooding, the U.S. National Hurricane Center says a storm has started moving about 1 mile per hour, 2 kilometers per hour, Tuesday morning and its speed is expected to increase slightly later in the day. Dorian's maximum sustained winds remain near 120 miles per hour, 195 kilometers per hour making it a major Category 3 hurricane. The storm is centered about 40 miles, 70 kilometers, northeast of Freeport in the Bahamas. Underscore at 2 a.m., Dorian has weakened to a Category 3 hurricane but continues to batter the Bahamas as it remains almost at a standstill. At 2 a.m. ADT Tuesday, the ferocious storm center was about 30 miles, 48 kilometers, Northeast of Freeport Grand Bahama Island, it has barely budged from that position since Monday afternoon. But its wind speeds lessen slightly to 120 miles per hour, 193 kilometers per hour, with higher gusts. That was down from 130 miles per hour, 209 kilometers per hour, Monday evening. The hurricane is about 100 miles, 160 kilometers, east of West Palm Beach, Florida. The National Hurricane Center said Dorian is expected to move dangerously close to the Florida East Coast late Tuesday through Wednesday evening and then move north to coastal Georgia and South Carolina on Wednesday night and Thursday. Underscore for a piece complete coverage of the hurricane, https colon slash slash appnews.com slash hurricanes. Let's block ads. Why?